Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Mm. Hello. You by <laughs> oh, me. no, my dryer's on. <laughs> Ignore my dryer. <laughs> the, oh, well, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't realize it was on. It's doing that thing, you know, where it stops it's, and then starts up again. It's like, the fourth member of uh, the Triforce podcast. Uh, that's, the, that's the benefits of recording in the garage, I Well, guess. yeah, I know. Um, but, I mean, hopefully at some point uh, the, the dryer won't be out here because there's some there's plans afoot, but... For now, the dryer is out here. When it stops, do you think it's like, is it taking a little rest or is it thinking? Is it's that a, it's how like long a, it takes the dryer to think? No, oh, I think it has like wet. a sensor in it where it can like detect moisture or something right. like that. So why and is it stopping? Because it gets so hot in there, it can't detect moisture anymore. I see. So it's like, oh, so it's it done. Yeah, and then yeah. it goes, wait and a minute. As the heat dissipates, it picks up more moisture. It's like, right. hang on a sec, these aren't dry. Gotcha. <laughs> then, <laughs> Captain, the towels are not dry. <laughs> must turn on again. <laughs> so I've got a setting on mine that is cupboard dry extra. Yes, I have that oh. setting right. too. So cupboard dry, yeah. how is that different from any other kind of dry? Because dry is dry. Yeah, surely. well, I mean, dry is dry, but like, I, like, there's a difference between like, for example, drying your clothes outside on a line, right? Uh, as opposed to putting your stuff into like an airing cupboard after it's been dried. Like, it's a different dry. Like, it's a, it's it's less. Define it for me. It's less crisp. Like, it feels like uh, it feels like the like the clothing is still. Not wet or even damp, I would say, but just like not crispy dry like it would be outside. It's still malleable it's, rather than that well, uh, rock yeah, hard. Yeah, the, if you, yeah. If you dry something outside, it's like, it's like, holy crap. It's like you 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 bring in a piece of cardboard, right? Like it's just... Right. But yeah, when, there's, there's obviously, you don't want to put stuff in the cupboard if it's still got a chance of being wet. You know, it's not, it's not ready to go away, yeah, right? Yeah. But there's obviously levels. You know, you've got sun dried, which is obviously. But that, you know, you're, you're talking quite, about the methodology dry. of the drying. Oven dried. <laughs> um, that would be quite right, weird. But here's the thing I'm never putting it away in the cupboard unless it's dry. So for it to be called cupboard dry must mean there are other forms of dry which would be acceptable to, for example, wear or store somewhere outside a cupboard. But what are they? What is what is other than the only dry I need is are my clothes dry enough for me to put them away? I mean, there's also the option of ironing them when they come out of the tumble dryer. Oh, come on. Well, different doing people that. have different hanging requirements, though, too, right? Some people won't hang their stuff out unless it's a certain level of dry. But then maybe you might want to hang it outside. You don't want it to be. Were well, you going to tumble dry it and then hang it outside? Oh, we've got both. Yeah, a lot of in people the summer, do that. In the yeah. summer, hanging stuff outside is like, man, it's crazy. Right, but you don't tumble dry it first. No, of course not. No, you just go straight right. out. So there, what yeah. I'm saying is, you're never going machine to line. So you don't need it to be line dry, like, where we, you can then hang it on a line. The tumble dryer. Why not just we, hang it on the line? We we use the tumble dryer a lot in the winter, obviously, because it can't really hang clothes. Right, up. right. But um, in the in the summer we we still use it quite a bit but only for towels linens and stuff right, right? because like you can't okay. really put that on the line because it's awful they always hang down a little bit so they big, just go yeah. they, they just go rock hard too like um like my my dick uh, when i'm thinking about laundry <laughs> obviously but um, um no like uh it's it, like that so the tumble dryer like makes stuff soft you know when you when you i don't know i don't know what it is you can put those sheets in sometimes as well like those drying sheets that have like the the, the nice smell on them i don't know i think that like softens up the fabric too uh, we don't use them but like I've, I've i've seen them before and um but yeah like all of our other clothes just go out on the line because you can just you can do so much uh washing and like our line's pretty big so you can put a shit ton of stuff out there it's great like uh the turnaround time for clothes drying in the summer is insane it's like so good well i've looked up on mon <laughs> appliances <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> the definition of popular tumble dry settings right okay sensor dry so sensor dry means that the drum sensor has detected the moisture and as soon as the clothes are dry irrelevant of what cycle you put them on it'll stop right okay so sensor dry means just tumble them until you think they're dry just just do it and when this drum says yeah they're dry I'll take your word for it. Extra dry, which is slightly longer cycle time. You're forcing it to, to dry for longer, and it ensures that bulkier items will dry. Yes. All right? Ideal for things like bedding and towels. Yes. There you go. Yes. Cupboard dry. This setting ensures your laundry is dry enough to be put away immediately 
once the cycle is complete. Right. Now, my question is, what's the difference between cupboard dry and extra dry? Because if you're even drying out bulky items with the extra dry, I would say they would also then be cupboard dry. I don't, you know what? Which means maybe one it, of them must be less dry than the other. Maybe it's no, just no, a no. feel-good setting. Maybe it's just like, maybe yeah. it's a setting they put on there yeah. just to appeal to the older demographic of people buying. Like, because younger people aren't really going to um, understand the notion of an airing cupboard, right? Like, they're not going to they're not gonna appreciate the cupboard dry, whereas like your mom probably will, sort of thing. So she goes out and buys a dryer and she's like, I don't know what a sensor dry is or anything, but I... Tell me when it's I, I, dry, I love darling. an airing cupboard, and there's Armoire a button on dry. here that says exactly. cupboard dry, so airing that must dry. be it. I think, I think it's be like some... a toaster. It's like it's for people who are using larger, thick slices of bread in their toaster and want an extra setting, you know. they You have to use your discretion. Yeah. I think it's just... It's almost like it's easier to call it cupboard dry rather than level six and extra dry rather than level five. True. I guess you're right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I just would like it more defined. Also, when it comes to toast, I've got a question about you guys, okay? All right. How toasted do you like it? Um, I like it pretty toasted. Uh, do you know what? Yeah. Cub cupboard toasted or extra toasted? <laughs> I like toast when I it's not at my house or made at my house. I like toast like when you go to like a cafe or like a buffet or something. The toast is always better. I, I don't know how... They do it, but my my toast at home is always kind of boring, and I find toast outside of the house You've exciting. Got in within your premises, <laughs> yeah, something's going on with the toast. Boner. The toast ain't working. There's something going on. Yeah, maybe the setting is not right, or like, uh, like I think it's the bread though. You have like. <laughs> you know, standard white square slices, whereas whenever you have toast out, they always have some sourdough. Yeah, that's nice too, actually. Thing. That's nice. Do you know what I mean? I'll be honest with you, the reverse is true in that we always have the sourdough toast, but sometimes you just want a nice piece of plain white toast. Yeah, have you ever had a sourdough bagel before? They're nice too. No. Oh, they're really nice. It's like uh, just bagel. Is it but... still... Is it still boiled? Well, yeah, it's all the same. Like, I, I don't know, like, how they do it, but it's just like a, a thicker mm. bagel. Like, it's just really nice. It's hard to get a good bagel from the supermarket. Um, yeah, they're I all flimsy, what... right? Like, do you ever get, just get those ones where they just bread. go, like, floppy? Like, they're not... They don't have it's any... Not, it's uh, not a bagel. They don't have it's any... It's just bread in, in a circle. Yeah. 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 It's bread in a circle is not a bagel. Yeah. That's, that's not a bagel. Need... It's not the solid... You need it solid, Oof. right? And you have to have yeah. some seed on it too, like some poppy seed or some sesame oh, you seed. Like or, that, oh, huh? yeah, yeah. Big, I don't want it seeded. I'm a big fan of some seeding. You do need a bit yeah. of seeds. I on like there. my bread yeah. smooth as a as a baby's uh, loaf of bread. Nice, yeah, That's really, really nice. Yeah. nice. No, no shit. I don't on think it. you're supposed to give babies loaves of bread. I yeah. don't know. Well, no, you're not not to give them, but they make them. That's baby bread. They just bake it right up, fam they? famously. Uh, they bake that shit well, in the oven. I, I like my toast. Yes, I, no black on it. I don't like any like charred oh, really? bits of burn. I like a little. Well, bit. I like. I, I like... don't mind a little bit. Have you ever had an open campfire toast before? You ever toasted bread? campfire toast? Yeah, you ever toasted uh, bread like on an open fire? No, out in the wilderness, like a marshmallow. It's kind of nice, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You, Remember, uh, we have a portage like you have. Some so, uh, so. some serious burning can occur if you're not careful. But there's like a there's <laughs> yeah. some there's a special tool you can get where basically it's like a sheet metal oh, I've seen in the shape this. of a piece of bread. And you can put yes. the bread in there and just hold it over the fire to stop it from burning. But it toasts it up real nice. Man, it's mm. kind of good. Like, well, it, like, it's like you're holding up a sort of banner yeah. with um, <laughs> a bread, <laughs> a, a, a bread, bread in there. Toast. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. support toast. Yeah, yeah. That's the banner. We should. Well, this podcast has been going for six years mm. now. Yeah, mad, we, well, isn't it? And we keep That's, mentioning yeah. portage. We're going to get too old to portage if we're not careful. We're never going to um, portage. I'll, I'll spoil that for you. Come what? on, never say never. But you never know. Might, one day you might have, have to do time. a portage. Who knows? Like, you never know what the future holds. I am not ever doing something like that. People die out there in the wilderness, and uh, I've got no interest. They in don't it. die as Sorry. often as you think they do. It's like still too much. Like the 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 modern preparations. You eat those MREs and stuff like that. You're you're halfway there, honestly. Yeah, like in my kitchen. Yeah, but come on. I mean, it's what's the difference? You just. Uh, you know, open it up in a trench that you dug yourself on an island that you've portaged to next to a hole that you dug to poop in. Like, it's it's all the same. That sounds like really... It's all the same shit. Uh, this is what I don't get about <laughs> it, right? Is you're going out of your way 
to have to do things that are otherwise convenient where you are. Yeah, I don't want to have to dig a hole to poop. It's not, a, a it's not about convenience when you I've got an oven. when you're doing a portage. You're not doing it to experience convenience. You're doing it to experience something a little bit different to the norm. So think of it like hanging out your washing as opposed to cover drying it. Yeah, you know, of course. It's, 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 you lose so something. You're comparing you know? hanging you're out your a little laundry. bit saucy one day, and you just, you just think, you know what? Screw this modern life. It's time for a portage, and off you go with your no, MREs and your spade. You're ready to. I'm good. That's all you need. A little tent. Happy at home. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so you're it's not like you're not into camping. camping. You're gonna have to take your cottaging <laughs> no, away don't. and do this. No. no. They need to be given this education. No, they don't. You know? They can't grow up all sheltered and 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 coddled with their sourdough toast. They absolutely they never, they can. never know what it's like to have a normal piece of white bread they toasted do know. on a fire. You know how over they know? A do you know how they know what it's mm -hmm. like to have a normal piece of white bread? Because we got an Ocado replacement item the other week that was they <laughs> they couldn't get our regular bread, so they gave us a big old doorstop Man. thick white bread. I, I I honestly I get I. I get supermarket deliveries of, of food to, to houses and stuff like that and how that's become really big. And and honestly, I do understand the whole delivery, delivery of food uh, to house thing. But do you think it's gone like a bit mad now? Like, uh, like, like there's people saying that they're spending like five figures a year on like food delivery and stuff. And to me, that that says that that's all they eat, which is kind of crazy. No, like I like that that can't. I, I know they yeah, order right. out for every meal. Yeah, like they never cook. They order in everything. That's the, and that's. I a, think that's crazy. That's alarming to me. Like I I think well, that. Well, I think it's a, I think it's so easy though. It's a slippery slope as well, right? And also, it's like if it's cold and you're feeling miserable, you know, you could just kind of do it. I suppose. And I think yeah. that when you have disposable income, why not? But yeah, I. Much like everything, you're it, not going to have it, much it disposable expensive. after spending five figures on <laughs> delivery food a year, though, right? But we all, that's but like this is, all this of is your just money. the latest thing. It's, gone. That's, that's it's always, it. it was people before that, though. It was, you know, we were like, oh, it's crazy that people go and buy a eight pound Starbucks coffee and sandwich every morning. Yeah, now right? it's become but hyper normalized, it's not all right? That like everybody different, does it. Really, like, to, I suppose it's up to people what they want to how they do their self budget you constantly see these like um reddits where it's like you know money money saving and things like this and they're like just just trim out all of your unnecessary expenses and then you know you look at someone's budget and you realize that they're just like wasting vast amounts of money yeah. having yeah you know overpriced sushi delivered or whatever to their, yeah, to their crazy. places every day i used to go out when i worked at, at uh in an office I, I designated myself as the guy who would go and get the sandwiches in the morning. Right. right. I, we sat in a large, it's like a, not an open plan, but it was like cubicles, you know. Um, so the team I was on was reasonably big. And this was when I was on the, the team. We were all about the same age. We're all in our sort of 20s, apart from maybe a couple of people. So we were all on the same page when it came to being hungry, uh, the way young people are, all the time. And we were like, I was like, uh, anyone want a sandwich? And I'd always get like three or four people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to just get out of the office. So people thought it was like a nice thing I was doing, I guess. But I think in the back of their minds, they must have realized that I knew it was a guaranteed half an hour outside the office because I have to get all the orders and then go down to the shop, which was like a 10 minute walk. I'd really go very slowly. Get in there, get the order, <laughs> come back. <laughs> I can I can imagine you like sauntering down exactly the whistling. Right. Really not in a hurry. <laughs> and then come back. And then of course we have to eat the breakfast. And then there's a bit of, oh, oof, oh that was just that hit the spot. Oh. And prior to that, that that would probably take me to about 10.30 in the day. Because I'd wait till about 10. That's when I'd do the sandwich rum and I'd come back and we'd eat. So that's like a full half an hour wasted. Nine to ten, I'd come in and there's a lot of stretching and oh, oh, check, just check up the messages, oh, you know, catching up with people, chatting. How would what'd you do yesterday? Talking about stuff you'd seen because nobody expects you to work as soon as you tell you. Don't sit down at the desk and start pounding away. No, you say hello to people and stuff. So I would stretch that into a good forty-five minutes. So at the end of that period, I had to look busy for fifteen minutes before the sandwich run, and then that's ten thirty. Lunch is at twelve. So they've only got an hour and a half to fill. I can easily fill an hour and a half easily without doing any work. I was a terrible employee. Well, I mean, I, most people well, are though. Well, yeah, I, think. I, was, I was just about to say how. Like, I think most people are pretty. <laughs> what bad. did you do where they said, "Why haven't you done any work today?" Well, luckily, um, they never really gave me any work to do. Yeah, that can happen. It was always like, I know that just not giving me any work. 
Um, well, they did me something, and like I just fought around for myself. a bit. Some of it wasn't like, very difficult. I, I did this thing the other day where I put together this like spreadsheet, and I was like, "I've done this spreadsheet. You know, we can use this." And someone was like, "Oh, I've I've done I've done that as well. Can we use my one?" And I was like, "Sure," because I just didn't want to rock the boat. I was like, "Do you know what? If you're gonna just do the same work I'm doing, waste your time. You're wasted." It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> uh, but like, I just, I was just like, I was just like, that's just, that's just normal office shit, isn't it? Yeah. You know, two people doing the same thing, and neither of them being caring enough to, um, to tell the other one not to waste their time. Most jobs are shit. Uh, most jobs, I don't, I don't really care what it is that, that anybody out there listening. Most jobs, what you do, nobody gives a shit. Your manager doesn't give a shit. The company doesn't give a shit. The bigger the company, the less of a shit they give about most jobs. You just do some little thing, and as long as it, you got you got basically a week to do anything. I'm I'm saying right now, no company moves that fast once it gets big. It's all fucking slow as shit, and they de delegate all these jobs out, and most of it is wank. They've got too many employees. The managers are fucking doing fuck all. It's all a load of shit. It's just that absolute wank. Then there are jobs where you just seem to be working all the time. Yeah. That's Mrs. F's job. My nightmare. She works all the time. She's since since the weekend, Monday she was working until like eight, nine o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Tuesday she had to go out all day, like not just the office, but go collect stuff, go here, there, and everywhere. And then yesterday she was in the office again, uh, had to go somewhere, like she had to get a train somewhere, do some work there. Then she got sent something by a client, a computer that she had to image, that had to be done that evening to, so that she could courier it back that evening and they would have it first thing in the morning, all this kind of shit. It's like, she's really fucking working. I'm like, that is what a job looks like. Yeah. I didn't have a job. I was just employed. Yeah. But they didn't really need me. No. Anybody could have, uh, uh, you know, easily doubled up and they still wouldn't have filled all their time and you could have done my job. I think companies just don't really know what people do a lot of the time. No. In their office. They don't really sure. It's like every every business is, is like, especially big companies, right? They have like, yeah, yeah. like over, over here, for example, they have... Uh, they, they they almost have to like because of the like tax benefits and 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 everything um i think a lot of companies are sort of turn around and say oh yeah great we we love these tax benefits can we just have a room with a phone sitting on the floor sort of thing will that be enough but then the jersey government's like no you have to hire like a thousand people because of the amount of money that you're making to you right. know for us to allow to you to come the... over here so it's like you you hire a thousand people but you only need like one of them to actually do anything. And then everybody <laughs> right. else just sits around, you know, going to get the coffees and, you know, organizing the lunch for everybody and like the non-work stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I worked with yeah. tons of people like that. I guess I was one of them too. Maybe I just didn't realize it at the time. But I mean, certainly I like a that, lot of the projects that I worked jobs, on it, yeah. never went anywhere. Like we would we would work on something, work on something, work on something. They're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be. Just wait till we deliver this. We deliver it. Nothing. <laughs> it would just get scrapped yeah. after a couple of weeks. Like it was just, just a waste of time. Silly, isn't yeah. it? But they're, they're the, those are the best jobs, though, honestly. Because like, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to work all the time. Like, uh, like you know, if you're gonna work hard all the time, it's something like I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to be doing that for somebody, and especially not for like to get like underpaid for it as well, right? Like most people. Yeah, are. That, that's the sad yeah. thing. I think is that a lot of people have like this is why I, I i think the working from home thing was was really good because i think it <clears throat> liberates people from the oppression of having to go into an office and look busy if you're worried that people aren't going to be doing the, the work you 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 should know because the deliverable at the end of their work won't be there and then you can fire them yeah but if you're giving people work to do and they're completing it to your satisfaction it doesn't matter if 90 percent of the time they just have to look busy yeah if you want give them more work and see if they can do that as well yeah just give them some rather than do this, this to we some want extent it, yeah, before standing over yeah. you as a just manager say, give them some more envelopes to lick or like some filing to <laughs> exactly. do or something like that i'm sure there's some stuff like there for them to isn't do isn't it weird like how like but but i think it varies right like, this reminds Reminds me of thinking about Elden Ring. Okay, yeah. oh, I don't want to. I don't want to open that can of worms too much. Obviously, I've been sick for the last couple of weeks. Um, never actually tested positive for COVID. I went through like five lateral flows, and then I had like a actual PCR that I had to mail off. Right. Yeah. Um, there's like a priority mailbox so you can send a PCR back. Don't want to empty uh, that so mailbox, I, by the no, way. No, I don't want to be the postman on that. Yeah. Christ. Holy crap. Anyway, no, um, sent it off. I didn't actually get a positive, but. 
I felt crap, so probably did have COVID. My partner had COVID, so um, I probably did have it, and it was it was shit. By the way, just don't want to don't want to go into it too much. But the main problem is I'm one of these sleepers who's like really sensitive. I'm a sensitive little boy. I can't. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not one of these people like you guys who can basically just fall asleep sat upright with the dryer going and a child screaming in your ear on a plane. Why? Do you know what I mean like there's like, at any point you guys are somehow everyone I seem to know is somehow able to fall asleep well, under well, any nature just prevails though. Like that's the thing. After you you can only take so much until you get to the point where you're just like fuck it, I'm sleeping. <laughs> like you, no, you know? that's not how it works for me. I just get more and more weird and tetchy and uh, tired and frustrated and yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, I, I had a few weird sleepless nights because first I had like a feverish night, and then I had like a phlegmy night, and then I had like a coffee night, and then I had uh, it was just every there was like night after night. I was just I felt super jet lagged, super yeah. shit. I didn't get to go to GDC, no. So I'm a bit upset about that. And then um, I, I I um I ended up playing a lot of Elden Ring, which. <laughs> I've got a lot of things to say about, but, <laughs> oh, but no. obviously, obviously to, <laughs> it's to the him from... review, the worst type of review. So, I was at a really low point in my life and decided that I would play just this game. Here's my review. Oh no! Oh, but I did other stuff. I played a load of board games. I read a couple of books. I did did some other. I watched, uh, I watched Patriot actually on Amazon oh, Prime, yeah. which I, I really enjoyed. Oh. Have you seen Patriot? No. I, what um, the Mel Gibson? Film? Man, I'm I'm no, fucking it's, neck it's deep a, in in maths. Married at first site australia mafsa fuck me I, i've oh, been asked sh- by i've a seen viewer. ads for that so i've been asked often. by a viewer for you to never watch that again yeah, it's, I'm, because it, it makes them ashamed to be australian i'm too i'm really? it's too late i'm too deep these people um it's oh my god it's unbelievable i have no stake in this because i don't care and i've never seen it and go, go ahead brother watch what you want but i'm just I wanted to pass along that message from an aussie yeah, saying, no, please that's, God, I've, it's I've embarrassing. Heard it, I've heard it before, yeah. It's like, well, I mean, they, they do a UK one, which is not not much better, honestly. I think, a, I think US once, one, it, once is, you get a different one, well, like one from your country, you feel ownership of it and you feel ashamed. I like, guess so, yeah. I, I, I think that's fair. Like now it's like, no, please, Australia, we thought we were better than, I thought it was better than this. And now we're doing the same bloody shit as the Yanks. Oh, you know, it makes uh, them angry. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, I've got. We'll think about that to go through as well. Actually, a second, but we can we can wait on that. Um. So yeah, Patriot. I really recommend it. It's like a, it's fairly. It's a couple of years old, but it's like a comedy kind of like. It's like if James Bond actually had to do some really awful shit, and then it kind of it comedically um, worked out. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of cool. I like it. I recommend it. But right. um, yeah, Elden Ring. Partly, I wonder because it was they, they took eight years to make this game, and it shows, right? There were clearly guys coming to the office every day. Some of them were going in saying, "Oh, can I do the sandwich order?" But others were just pl- plugging away, building like a new creature every week for eight years. Do you know what I mean? That's is that's that how long it, it took to make the game? Yeah, eight years. And, eight. Um, I thought it was five. Is it eight years? Five is a long time too, man. Like imagine working on the same thing for Even five years. Five is I a mean, long oof. time. Yeah, huge, huge effort went into it. And you, and it shows, right? And then at the same time, you have like, okay, here's my hot take. <clears throat> Elden Ring isn't actually very hard. Okay. Okay. Here's my, here's my hot take. And the reason is, is that it's sold a lot of copies, right? It's, yeah. It's sold, let's say, well, it's got 300,000 reviews on Steam. Yeah. So that means obviously one in 100 people leave a review. So that's about 30 million sales in the first you know month. That's quite a lot mm-hmm. of sales, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, maybe more. I don't know. But yes, that's that, a lot of people bought Elden Ring. A lot of people are, are, are wrapped up in the hype. A lot of people who've never played a game like this before have bought Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, it's their first Dark Souls. You know, a hu- huge amount of people. Uh, th- this is like a huge, huge game that's had huge, massive global hype. Everyone's bought into it, right? Yeah. What do you think, like the percentage of people who have, I don't know, let's just say killed the first boss is, right? Um, 20%. Yeah, like probably probably 20%. Because a lot of people will just not have started playing yet. I yeah. guess. And or given up or just yeah. not liked it. Okay, the first boss. Uh, Are we Mark- talking Margaret? Fell Omen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought you meant like, I thought you meant the one you come back Is there a to. tutorial boss or is this just out in the world? There's this no tutorial for boss. You no, mean no, the no. first like legendary boss? Like the actual... Yeah, the first legendary uh... boss, Margaret Fell Omen. Yeah. I'd say, let's say 75%. 75%. Yeah. Well, first of all, on Steam, you, so you're saying that 
not only have so you so okay the first boss is quite hard obviously Mark it. but yeah, yeah but it's but you also like you got you got my boy to help you out you got Regier. are you still playing it flax fuck yeah dude holy crap how long i've got it? 70 hours in it now jesus the point the point okay let's let's pick a different boss because that is actually 75 percent right, let's all right name a hard boss in the game uh gods the god godskin twins okay. i think it's godskin there's the, the long lad that can go all stretchy and the lad that can turn into a mush uh, like a marshmallow duo. yeah those god's two duo. okay how many what percentage of people who've bought Elden Ring have that achievement. That's Look, quite like far into 15%. the game. 15%. Uh, I'm going to say 20%. Maybe 25 Tw- I'm going to say 25%. Oh my god, it's exactly... It's 23%. Holy... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a huge... Uh, I mean, but... if we were going to look at stats similar to this for Cyberpunk, I mean, I bought the game like because it was so hyped. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. Like, yeah, I, exactly. I own it. Like I have never it. launched it to play it. So. It's so bad, dude. Don't bother. So the, but the reason I'm saying those numbers, Lewis, is because most people that get a game don't have 70 hours free to stick into it. Like, I understand that I'm in an exceptional position. I think these numbers are incredibly high. I, I don't know. I think 25% uh, of people who bought Elden Ring having already killed right. God's Gear Duo, which is like 60 hours into the game, right? Was, right. It, was it a hard player. boss or did you find that one easy He's too? He's hard. He's hard. He's hard. No, because Lewis was saying it's hard. not a hard game. So, like, I, no, I think he, I'm he's, expecting he's a using story the metric. about like a one shot or when something. I, but but if, it's, if it's a hard game, how are 25% of people killing one because of the hardest bosses in the game? It's a very popular game. There isn't really anything like it. Like, it's a genre. The souls are like. Yeah, but I game, feel like it's right? one of those games Already. where you can just practice and, and you'll eventually just beat everything, right? You, you will get there. Like, the fact is, the bosses don't come up in, in the traditional way. Because you can go away and level right. and just say, all right, that was hard. I'll go do some other things, get some levels, improve my weapons a bit, come improve back my, and then my, my summons a bit whoop his or ass, whatever yeah. it is, your spells, and then come back and I'll beat him. I'll be five levels higher. Maybe that'll make a difference. And right. also, I, I think that the, the, the thing that I've noticed, because I normally do not play these kind of games, is things that they've made easier are the fact that you don't have to fucking run through half a level to get back to where you were when you died, there are save points everywhere. Like, really, really frequent. So you'll beat a bit of the game, save. Beat a bit of the game, save. And you can recover your runes when you die, hopefully. Sometimes you'll miss out, but runes are easy to come by. The main thing is loot. Finding the loot, getting the loot, killing the bosses for the good loot, because that's how you really push your your character, the levels you can get, you just go fucking farm that metal ball that falls off a cliff if you want, or go find an area where there's a bunch of easy to kill enemies and kill them over and over again, if you want. So the runes thing is, it's great getting like 200,000 runes from killing a boss or whatever, fantastic. But the main thing is the loot, getting those items, unlocking that shit, getting the bell bearings and buying just, oh yeah, my ultra leveled plus 20 mace, oh, like that's how you win the game. And I think in terms of difficulty, it is hard, but it's fair. The game is fair. The bosses Dying present right their attack to you in a way where they're like, this is how you beat me. I'm going to play 30, like this and then two of, seconds later. Of people have completed Dying Light 2, right? right. Stay human. That's relatively Which recent. Which is, that's, come out, that's right? well, well done because I gave up. That game was so badly written, I, I actually fucking gave up. And carry on. It's, a, it's about 20% of people who've played Elden Ring currently, who've bought, who've bought Elden Ring, have completed it. Right. And that is... An astonishingly high number, I think. Twenty percent is a- for a game that is supposed to be very hard. It is inverted hard. commas. It is hard. Um, well, it's not though. And the re- the other but reason there's like I'm glitches and not- stuff too, right? Like people. Well, there are some bosses you can glitch. Yeah. Sure. First of all, I'm sure it was very very hard for those trailblazing few who bought it on release. But within three days, there was an extensive clickbait media presence for this game of. Guides, exploits, hacks, like not right. hacks necessarily, but yeah. you know what I mean, they call them hacks, but they, they mean like, oh, this overpowered weapon. Yeah. Because the game isn't balanced at all, you know. No, but um, people go for that kind of stuff too, though. Like, but the point like- is, what I'm saying is that if you aren't good at games, it doesn't matter, right? Because you can tab out and it'll tell you how to be good, right? With one, well, oh, typing in one that. sentence. So there it are does. some fights where. You, you have to dodge really, really precisely. Time your attacks well, figure out how to beat the boss. And if you, as long as you're not over-leveled for them. There are some bosses that are really, really hard. They're and just there are hard. some that are really, really easy. Yeah, I, yeah, there I, are. On my first playthrough, I 
got to a boss, died 20 times, got to the next one, one shot him. Got yes. to the next one, died 20 times, got to the next one, one shot him. Yeah. And it was like very, very... What is, you, you hit the boss one time and he died? Well, you basically, you know, well, I didn't die killing him. Do you know what I mean? I okay. killed him and didn't die killing him kind of thing. And yeah. I didn't expect to kill him first time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was... I but, beat some lad like, who had a girlfriend and an egg. I can't remember his name. There's lots of blood. I killed him on my second try and people were like, wow. I think you you're over leveled for this area was was, uh, was what they they fumbled for. Okay, because uh, I'm like a level 115 or 117 or something like that. Sure. Like I've been playing the game a lot, and these are the bosses I should be beating. I'm approaching the end of the game. I yes. should be a badass. Like that. That's yes. the point. Really. Well, there yeah. is a late game sort of uh, difficulty spike though a little bit. I mean, uh, look, we can talk about Ring a lot, but but I, I kind of felt like it was really interesting just to see how the 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 the, the support structure. Right. sprung up instantly you know with this interactive map like guides yeah, like walks through uh, like, like is... the internet just became caught on fire well, it's very with popular this. game well, it i guess what i'm saying is though this happens for every game now though it's it's, I, I, it's not every it's, game it's, though. it's just the modern day nintendo say. power right it's just like <laughs> this desire has always been there for to consume games this way so are you saying that, that elden ring has been made too easy by no. the community of people that like it making stuff about it. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, I think it depends on what you mean by easy. If you mean, if, if a hard game is defined by, when I think this is the conventional definition of you having to learn dexterity and based, based reactions to a, a standard, you know, you have to... I think Elden Ring is a lot of learning. Okay, it's like every area you go into is it some. There's you have to remember. There's a guy behind that pillar. There's a skeleton behind that thing with an arrow. You have to dodge across this bit, run across this bit, do the whole thing, and then you're done. Right? There's this. There's this whole like you're constantly learning moves and actions and where locations are and where people are, and it, and that makes it harder than you just pressing A and mashing or or conventional games that that drip, that, that make it easy for you. Right? I think. But the point is that. Here's my point. <clears throat> so with Minecraft, that when it came out, there was no tutorial, there was no guide. You had to tab out, you had to learn yourself, blah, blah, blah. This became one of the most successful games of all time and a very popular kids game as well, despite it not giving you any help, no hand-holding. Recently, one of the things I've experienced is a lot of game developers and a lot of games people I've talked to have gone back and put in these extensive tutorials they've gone back and made the new player experience yeah like, there's there's a lot of talk about this new player experience the idea that that you know the gamers are fucking stupid right and 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 dumb and they want to understand how to play a game and so you have to teach them and you have to blah, blah, blah. but all you do sometimes in these tutorials is is turn people off more right elden ring does not hold your hand it doesn't give you any guidance it just throws you in at the deep end and you have to figure it out yourself and and you do end up figuring out a lot of it yourself but whenever you get stuck there is that safety net right where you can tab out and fit find it and it works for elden ring because it's so massive right yeah elden rings community has created this entire guide to the game where anything you're looking for you can find it at at a glance right instantly right whereas a less popular game let's not say dying light 2 but uh, maybe doesn't have that that detail that rabid i mean no, any but elden item ring in the game is, is, elden uh, ring, is i could type in and this is within two weeks of, of it being out three weeks of it being out right it's not been out a long time it's not like you know, it's like we were saying about office work. Fans and communities build these resources with passion, yeah, so fucking quickly and efficiently, right? And sometimes there's going to be mistakes in there. It's not going to be perfect, but mostly, I can I could type in any dungeon now and there'd be a walkthrough. I could type in any item now, they would tell me where to have it. Do you know what I mean, I think they cataloged almost everything in the game, even down to the stuff like I read this morning. The, the the fear the deathbed guardian she had some pair of panties that was like cut from the game because they were too sexy or whatever you can fucking cheat engine <clears throat> those into your playthrough now um like 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 the people have got this level of detail in this game and it works for elden ring what i'm right. saying is like a lot of i've seen a lot of game developers talk about elden ring as an example of bad game design and everyone who who says anything about Elden Ring being bad in any way is shouted down <laughs> yeah, by the very, masses. Very and much. almost like they should be. Like in a sense like if you're complaining about Elden Ring, yet you've completed it four times and you know, put two hundred hours in, sure, you could give some feedback, but your feedback 
isn't necessarily right because obviously something has worked with the game that made you do it that much. If you start saying, oh, it would be better if it was like this way, uh, well, would you have played it as much? Would you like it as much? How do you know? What like, are the criticisms the, about it? It's by the, the way. secret source. I think the big criticisms of Elden Ring are obviously the the the, the fact that you need uh, nine different MacGuffins from across the world uh, that are only available in different spaces, at least early on, to upgrade your weapons and spirit ashes. And so as a result, you constantly are be given all these rewards. Like, oh, a spirit ash of a new... Uh, a pony, a dog, a marionette, a soldier, a thing. I'm never going to use that because I don't have 19 separate su- um, you know, upgrade materials. So wait, you can only get this stuff whatever. by fully exploring the whole no, no, world? No, no, in- like, let, no. Let's say, let's say that I want to... Like, your, your, your build that you're going for is very much about a certain kind of sort of stat build, if you like. Right. So sometimes I'll get a reward from a chest or from a boss that my character can't use. Right. No, 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 99% of items in the game, Sips, you will not use. And the reason that that sucks is because there are upgrade materials that are in the game and you only naturally come across enough to upgrade one or two weapons and one or two spirit ashes in the course of playthrough. Yet you're given 50 weapons and 50 spirit ashes and there's no reason, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't just have all of your spirit ashes upgrade in line, okay, together and then you could just say, oh, on this fight I'm going to try using the the skellies on this fight i'm going to try using the big slime on this fight i'm going to try and use this thing but no the game kind of forces you to pick one because there aren't really enough materials for you to get more than that until the very late game when you obviously can buy any of those materials for money but again that involves quite a lot of money and quite a lot of farming and 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 that's it's too late in the game at that point for it to matter i guess the point is that i got bored of elden ring multiple times because I was using the same weapon for fucking 10 hours or 15 hours. And I was like, I'm fucking bored with this fucking weapon. Like, I've got 10 more in my bank that are taunting me yeah. and saying, oh, use this cool axe, use this cool hammer, use this cool thing with a cool ability. And I'm I'm saying to myself, no, because I don't have the fucking somber smithing stones or whatever right. the MacGuffin I need <laughs> to upgrade this fucking axe. And so I'm not going to use it. And that made me not want to play the game uh, a lot of times. I, I think I think the... I, I I take that point, and I I think you're probably right that there's. I mean, I don't understand why, like when I'm streaming it, I'll get some weapon I can't use, and I go to sell it, and everyone's like, no no no, don't sell it. I'm like, why? I'm never going to use it. I'm going to finish it's worth the game 100 without using runes. it. Right, but <laughs> I don't care if it's in my inventory. AFK gargoyle gives you thirty thousand runes. Right, yeah. but what? Why have it? Like I don't I don't see it. So, but some people like to collect all the things, and you can try them out, and they all look very cool. I I think honestly that the reason that it gives you all this stuff and makes you choose is because sometimes you'd be like, oh man, if I did an arcane build with dex, this weapon would be perfect with this uh, ash of war. So on my next playthrough, I'm going to do this. And yeah, it's, it's about showing it people these are all the different weapons out there. And just imagine if your build was like this, this would be really pog. So you could try that next time. So it's encouraging people to tr- to play the game again. I know people who've beaten it multiple times as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, 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 done it, I've, I've done it twi- twice. Yeah, yeah. My and mate it's, Bob it's... already has 100% achievements on the game. There's not many achievements on it, but he's all the achievements are done. He's on the all. I think it's it's a game where you want to get all the achievements. Yeah, right, right. The, the, the genre is is huge, right? Like it's very popular. Like like there's a lot of it's it's a really really cool game. Fandom around say, like the I, Dark I Souls those, games and stuff. Like those weird thoughts. About it has it. that kind of community to it. Like a very dedicated community, right? That that want to find out all, all the things. <laughs> Speed running. Also, like, I, I think it's really really immersive. Yeah. I mean I I I I my first playthrough I did as like a pure sort of shield sword guy. And then they nerfed um they actually nerfed barricade shield which I was using. Um right. which is the one where you shield up and when you take shield damage you don't take any stamina damage. Right. So you can kind of just tank like these huge, huge hits yeah, and yeah. sort of counter in, which is really, really fun. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sorry, hey, poor Lewis. Lewis. We're dragging I'm running these, out these words out of you. He's, he's and then um, spluttering. The second one I did was was sorcery, and it, either either I was used to the game or 
sorcery was just incredibly easy because I pounded my way through that game the second time of sorcery. Um, and I'd really, but the, one, the thing I learned sort of the second time was I really wanted to try the incantations build because there, there's so many cool yeah. sounding incantations. Yeah, that, yeah, me At too. least with those, you can switch between them, right? And you can use all the incantations. Um, whereas I, I guess it feels like it's weird because if you're playing sorcery, you can use all the spells. If you're playing, um, I guess you can use all the. If you're playing melee, you could use one weapon and one shield. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah, and it's like for the whole game, and it's like, oh, frustrating. Uh, yeah. Part of me wants to try it, and but part of me like doesn't feel like I, I'll enjoy it. You know, like it's it's just like I think you would enjoy it. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, it's actually really really. Good. I keep it's, hearing I mean, such could... good things about it, but it's just like it's just not my kind of game. You know, like a... dude, honestly, I thought the same thing. Like, I honestly, I tried the other Souls games and I just couldn't get anywhere. I found them so punishingly hard and just depressing and brutal. And I was like, yeah. this is just not for me. But honestly, the, the fact that there's so many save points and the, the open world is really very beautiful. Um, some parts of it are terrifying. And when you fight a boss, it's great. The storyline makes no sense to me. No. I have no fucking idea what's going yeah. on. Yeah. And oh my god! I need That's help not from even... chat a lot of the time because it's like very, very vague about what you're meant to do next. And sometimes it's things like you have to rest in a specific grace to get a particular interaction with a particular character. And I would never have found that oh ever my in a million years. It's it's uh, that's the biggest problem with the game that, that it's an open world game where you will just accidentally walk past the guy that you're supposed to talk to, right. and then then you then you, then you you fucked his quest line. He'll turn up dead at the next place or whatever, right. and you'll loot his body. And you'll be like, that's a weird bit of loot. I don't know what that was, you know. And it turns out that guy had a whole quest for you and a whole a whole load of stuff. And I guess you're, I guess I'm doing that next playthrough kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, but I, know, I know a, a lot of the, the comments in chat. I don't know if they've watched someone else do it or they they did it the hard way. Because I'm thinking I've I've been pretty pretty quick at doing this. In that I've gone, I haven't done every single thing possible. There's a lot of areas I still haven't explored, but I'm nearly at the end of the game, and I've had a lot of help from chat in like, go here, do this. You need to talk to this guy. <clears> go <throat> to this tower. If I didn't have that, I'd probably have twice as long in this game, and all that would just be running around thinking, "What the fuck am I meant to be doing?" Yeah. No, no, no. Again, you just tab out and follow the guides. Right. Like it's, it's there's like ten NPCs. They each have quests. If you keep track of them, you can do them all in one playthrough. They, right. They, you know, and it, and it actually is a much more fulfilling experience when you do that because you realize like, you hear a lot of plot, you hear a lot of characters. First time I played it. I barely talked to any NPCs. I didn't even know what I was doing. There's this woman who asked for like a shibri grape. Yeah, okay? yeah, the grape. And I'm like, okay, sure, have a grape. And she's like, thanks. And I thought that was it. Turns out the grape, I'd never read it because I never really go into my inventory and press right. R or anything. <laughs> the shibri grape is a fucking moldy eyeball, right? Uh. And, she, and she eats these fucking, she, what, she doesn't realize until much later in the game, once you've given her like five eyeballs, um, that she's eating fucking eyeballs. Oh, and this this leads to an alternate ending, which I didn't even know was in the I game. I gave her a grape. I yeah, gave that's her like a, a grape. rotting eyeball. Oh my god! And she uses those because you're going to get the eyeball ending now. Lucky. Oh man. You know, I don't so know if I want the eyeball. Now you fucked but it. Again, that process of of oh, I looted a grape. I don't know what that is. Oh, she wants a grape. I'll give it to her. That was to me. That was just something very throw away, right? Yeah. But actually. That is like a whole thing. And the, the, the problem with it is, is that you have to actually go into your inventory, find the grape, look at it, press R, read what it's about and be like, oh, a rotting fucking eyeball. That's disgusting. Yeah. You want to eat this? OK, sure. And then, you know, that it makes your decisions a lot more. But I wouldn't put it um, past half the characters in the game that that's exactly what they want. Like, they're all fucking crazy. I know. Every, the whole world is is It's a, it's a really bonkers wild. world. Absolutely bonkers. But it's, it's kind of refreshing in a sense because it is so completely wild. Like, it like is. The, just everything about it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, big, big fan. And plus, you can kill everyone. You could even like kill that <laughs> turtle pope. You can just kill yeah, anyone. You can kill the pope. Like. Turtle yeah, pope. He's a turtle pope. Turtle pope. <laughs> you, you know what? The... My friend Sir Action Slacks has been playing <laughs> he's, it. And... He's the pope. He's also a turtle. <laughs> he's yes. been playing it in a very unique way. In the, mm -hmm. he's like playing as a completely naked caveman with a club. Right. And that's his playstyle. Like he's just running around as a caveman, struggling against things. He beat this one boss who. He's not really a boss. You don't have to fight him. He's just standing there outside this building. And he he spent over an hour running up behind him on his horse, hitting him once, 
hiding, waiting for him to de-aggro, and then doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Just did okay. that over and over and over again for over an hour and streamed it. And I was like, that's definitely one way to play the game. But the thing is that the, because there's so many ways to play it, I think you can go for that cheese build if you want, yeah. or you can make it incredibly hard for yourself. You don't have to read all the hints and tips online. Like the, the game basically lets you make of it what you want. It kind of, I've, I've found myself sometimes trying to do something the hard way, the honest way, and then eventually being like, this is too hard. Or right. I get to like 1% and like get hit by some bullshit, like a combo that I can't <laughs> dodge or some bullshit. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm just going to cheese this. And I stand in a doorway. Right. Or I, or, I, or I get myself on the edge of a building and I just fucking kill the boss where he can't hit me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, Perfect. fuck you, game. Right. Um, because it is hard. And if, if there's anything you can do to win... You can do it. Like it's it's like there's no honor in no. In, but uh, like I, I I'm Ring. up for doing that stuff if I figure it out myself. You know, like if I'm having a tough time and I stand in a doorway and it works, I get that sense of satisfaction. Like <laughs> right, I've you done beat it. Them. But They're I would I, it would be for me like to go off and look that up and then do it and then feel good about it. I would not actually feel great about it, sort of thing. You know, I wouldn't have the same satisfaction if I just you know, kind of randomly uh, figured it out myself and then and then done it, you know? Like, it, it just feels better mm. to do it that way, in, in my opinion. I know it's like oh, a it does. weird thing. You're but... totally, totally right. I, and I think that, I think you have to, you have to trick yourself into believing yeah. that you've you've had a good time. I like the I like um one thing that like uh, I really like it in in gaming like on this on this subject is I like discovering stuff. You know like I like you know like people who just rush through a game and min max the hell out of it and look up all these efficiency guides and stuff. I get it. Like I I get that that's their version of, you know, finding something satisfying or whatever, but for me it's like I like to, I, I just like to have time with the game and like, I like to try to figure it out, you know, like I like to. Right. I, well, that's I, fucking, I, if you want to go in blind to Elden Ring, holy shit, that would be hilarious. Fuck. Well, I, I probably would though. That's that. the thing. I mean, I'm not, I haven't like watched any streams with no or chat. videos. Like I'm just not no, interested no in the chat. game. So it's not, um, it's not something that like I've, you know, like looked into. Like if I'm playing something, I'm interested in it. I'll have like, you know, videos or whatever on in the background sort of thing. That's fine. But like with something like this, I, I mean, I've never really looked into it. You know, I just sort right. of wrote it off as a Dark Souls game that like I was never going to play. So I should give it a go. Yeah, I think it, it, I it probably is really will, fun. Yeah. If it's, I think don't, don't let Twitch chat help you and you'll be so fucking lost. It's Holy really hard. shit. But yeah, you'll be well. Again, let's finish off my talk. Not finish off, but let's finish off my TED talk. My hot I mean, takes. <laughs> my hot take is that I, I guess in a sense. It's it's hard, but it's like building a brick wall. Do you know what I mean? Like you like you do, you do it brick by brick, and it's done. It's not hard. It's doable. You learn it. It's learnable. It's it's not it's not hard in the way that I'm never gonna be good at chess. I'm never gonna be able to. I'm never really gonna get a feeling of that I'm good at chess. Do you know what I mean? I think chess is hard, but I think Elden Ring is like a wow boss. It's like a series of wow bosses. Yeah. Do you know what Elden Ring is to me? It's a series of really hard WoW boss fights that you have to learn the choreography yes. of and do the special dance, yeah. right? Combined with a load of those horrible Mario Maker levels where it's torture. And literally the, the, <laughs> the whole thing is like <laughs> 10 platforms, but behind every... So it's like, <clears throat> the first thing is like, oh, okay, okay, I run across this room and there's a hole there. You run across the room and in the hole is a skeleton and he kills you. So, okay, you run across the room, you kill the skeleton, you get in the hole and you run across and then th then as soon as you kill the skeleton, the hole falls through and you die. Yeah. So you're like, okay, it's just, you it's run across just the room, kill the skeleton, a sequence, dodge the hole, yeah. do the thing. And, and there was this one place, I think I remember it was, I think it was called like Wyndham Catacombs or something. But Is this the one with me, the, the chariots? Oh, that, that push you into no, the it fire. wasn't. There was some of the ones <laughs> with chariots so of shit. Grim. But there was this one where literally every single part of that a dungeon was designed to troll you. It was like it was like a, a perfect troll dungeon. It had like ten components, and every single one caught me and killed me. And I learned them one by one by one yeah, by yeah. one. And then eventually, I could do the whole the whole lot in all ten in one go. And that was that to me was what Elden Ring is. So Elden Ring is is that it's it's incredibly hard boss fights, um, but they they but all of them are learnable, and these these kind of odd Zelda style dungeons out there like Breath of the Wild style 
shrines out there in the wild, which obviously never give you anything that you're ever going to use because unless you specifically look for the one which you're like, oh, okay, I want this. this obviously, I need this talisman, which makes me 20% physical damage resistance. Right. Pretty important. That one is at like this specific one. So I'm going to go and do that one. Do you mean otherwise, you know, you probably would have never found the fucking thing. Right. But yes, um, Elden Ring, I recommend. Check it out if you haven't. Oh, we're done. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save money when shopping on your computer or your iPhone. Uh, I actually did use Honey this week. It was Mother's Day. Oh, uh, of course it was. Uh, this Shit. And I happened to go to a site that I don't normally use and it has a voucher code just nice. appeared in did there. You, uh, did so, you make sure that you sent your mum the receipt so that she could see how much of a big saving you got? Yes, so thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing in the past my mum would approve, yeah. actually. Hell yeah. Of the people, she doesn't have to sit at the kitchen table cutting them out of the newspaper now anymore. It's all digital, baby. Exactly. (laughs) Lewis, come and look at the coupons with me. Wow, look at all those savings. (laughs) Look at the savings. Uh, I don't have to type those in. Honey does it automatically. It's free. It scales the the internet. Sit on my lap and look at the coupons with me. Just like all the times. Look at those promo codes. Think of the hours we could pass looking at coupons, but no more with honey. It's Taking the fun out of coupons. <laughs> <laughs> it's ruined the coupon time. Um, yes. Uh, so imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. You ju- uh, the honey button just just knows that you're checking out. It fills in the little box automatically, and uh, it will find it will find coupons for surprising amounts of things. Oh, man. Especially if you like me are trying not to use Amazon, um, and so you're buying stuff from other places on the internet, um, and th- you'll be surprised how much you can save. So yes, go and get honey. You can find it by on Chrome. Or, or adding onto your phone. Or you can go to joinhoney.com slash Triforce. Uh, joinhoney.com slash Triforce. It's like, a coo- it's like a coupon for coupons. From us. Yes, yeah, so it's our own it's coupon. Our own coupon. Yeah. Holy shit. So there you go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the sponsorship. This week's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like paying for a gym membership and then not being able to use anything except the treadmill. I'm, oh. I'm not even using the treadmill. I'm, I, I've got a membership to the gym. I've never even stepped foot in that bitch. No, not even once. <laughs> You're ma- not taking advantage of it, Sips. You can find content. You could go to gyms across the world with ExpressVPN. You could access shows in over a hundred different locations. Oh my god. You could finally know what Hungarian Netflix is like. Oh, I can't wait. Yes. You could just look up and find that you'll be surprised what they have exclusive on other platforms. Like you have a look, um, Google it up, you'll find there's tons and tons of stuff. And it works with other things like iPlayer. I use ExpressVPN to get around those YouTube blocks where they're like, oh, you have to be in America to watch this. And it, it saves me a lot of time. So yes, you can use ExpressVPN. I do, it's got zero buffering because it's HD streaming. I don't notice any s- slowdown. It's got good speed. Uh, it's compatible with all my devices. I use it on my iPad. My dad uses it so he can watch iPlayer from the States. It goes to show how easy it is to use because he's even older than me. Holy crap. Just think about it. That means he's older than Dust. Yeah, I feel like your dad using ExpressVPN on his device is like Jordy LaForge using the holodeck. <laughs> and, but yeah. being like kind of <laughs> creepy with it too, you know? <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because ExpressVPN has the added benefit of encrypting all of your data so no one knows what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, so you wouldn't accidentally walk into the holodeck while you're trying to romance uh, Deanna Trump. Troy, like Jordy did that. Number one, one, I told you not to not to disturb me. Number one, <laughs> number one I told you hands off my bitch. Uh, get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash triforce. Uh, you can use our link expressvpn.com slash triforce to get three months free of ExpressVPN. And we obviously use it. We recommend you do. Thank you very much for the support. And on with the show. Can I? I haven't done this uh, recently because I think we've just had so many hot topics to discuss. But can I give you guys an update on this year's Apprentice, which is uh, coming to a close? It's the last mm. episode is looming. It's uh, they're Thank all God. done. The interviews and everything. Uh, honestly, my my hot take on this year's Apprentice is that it's been the worst series so far in terms of c- <laughs> candidates. They've been just dreadful like really really fucking bad like um and now there's there's two left going into the final and it's just a, the the I guess the best of a bad bunch but i wouldn't even say that they are like they're just they're just both really bad so yeah so it'll be it'll be the end 
uh, of another <laughs> series of my favorite God. show. Uh, oh, until I'm sorry, I hate it when that happens. I know. When it's you're that you're watching really such a lot of shit. Though, I do honestly. watch a lot of shit. Yeah, but I mean, I've said this like uh, before to like to chat and stuff. It's it's the it's the viewing experience. It's not the show itself, right? It's, right. It's right, having right. fun watching it with people you like watching these crappy shows with. You know, like my in laws are in on it and stuff as well. So like you know when we get together on the weekend or whatever whatever we can like make fun of contestants on the apprentice or people on married at first sight or whatever and it's 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 great it's it's really fun but it's it is it is it is bad tv like it's like it's predatory tv as well the way that it's <laughs> the way that it's produced and stuff like it's yeah, it's, it's, just, it's unbelievable but it's, i feel uh, like they don't I, give yeah. them a chance not they don't give them a chance not to be idiots no like you think they do yeah but if they do something non-idiotic yeah that's on the floor Every, that's on the cover everything floor. Is, they're not putting that in no everything everything is geared up to make them look as as stupid as possible i'm like I'm but they convinced. are also idiots they are also like, I saw, idiots i saw yeah, a so clip could, of something to do with some soap it just kind Come so Where naturally to them. One of the contestants had spent so much money on this particular essence that goes in their soap that they'd blown through like their entire budget oh, on I mean, yeah, just this just... one perfumey thing. Yeah. And I'm like, that's so stupid. Like, how could you do that and claim that you you know anything about anything? Well, the worst really? thing is, is that a lot to, of these people, you know, they're 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 mostly like self proclaimed entrepreneurs is, or or whatever. But some of them actually just have normal jobs. And like, there's yeah, there's yeah. one task this year where it was like a it was kind of like a hospitality task, right? It was like a corporate hospitality, like it was a day out at uh, I think it was like Silverstone or something. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they had to they had to lay on a, a lunch and, uh, right on. <laughs> and they had to do like a, you know a tour of the of the place or whatever. And one of the girls was like, you know, this is my my normal job like i have a really good job and this is what i do day in day out like make like make me the project manager and uh we got this in the bag sort of thing and you're like okay cool like you know maybe we'll actually see somebody who can do this job because this is what she does day in day out man she was terrible like she was so mm -hmm. fucking bad like i've never done that job i could probably do it better and like it just like just these like really stupid mistakes and you just think how do you do this all the time right like, she must just be lying or something i don't know but like well do you know what it's it's like i said about it's nerves or something i don't about know man people, like, people not really doing much at work yeah yeah i think it, like a lot of the time if you're part of a team and you're the manager you're used to delegating to people who actually do the work and know what they're doing yeah and you're just used to saying i'll organize this by pointing at people saying you do your job and you also do yours you three over there your jobs do them it's like i know how to do this no you don't you know how to tell other people that know how to do it what to do yeah. and when yeah you... but you're actually fucking useless on your own yeah she's playing elden ring without looking anything up that's the that's her job that's, that's she's her doing. job she's on yeah. the apprentice. so um so that's coming to a close and i also want to just share one one quick story from uh, married at first sight australia which i found very funny this guy he's like uh like 38 years old uh, he had a, a previously a, a previously broken marriage and is looking for love in all the wrong places. So he got matched up with this woman who um, you get this from time to time on the show. This woman and it happens to men as well. But this woman is like nearly 40 years old and she's never had a proper boyfriend. She's never been in a proper relationship. Uh, she lives with her twin sister who's also single and they just like whatever they work and they don't speak to anybody what they do don't they do? do anything i don't know how do they how do they get through they don't life go yet? into it but basically she's just hopeless like when it comes to having a, a partner relationship she's she's never really had one and Me she too. doesn't really know what to do and stuff so fair <laughs> enough so they match Me her too, and they match her with this guy years, who's <laughs> just coming out of a failed relationship he was married for years they fostered children together all this stuff you know so he's like he knows what he's doing kind of thing he's like a veteran yeah. family man so they get yeah. married like the 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 first you know they they At first they sight. come into the show like they 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 were late late joiners to the show they they were like another wave of like uh you know couples or whatever reinforcements yeah, yeah. well there's been like nine fucking seasons well of this yeah shit, but people so. leave all the time and stuff you know they get mad so anyway they're getting married and this guy is like you know you could see it in his face he's just like 
can't believe his luck like he's he landed this this girl who's now his wife sort of thing is she really good looking um i mean like she's uh, she's okay like she's not like she's not like drop dead gorgeous or anything but she's like whatever you know like she he, he seems nine? to really like her wait what season is this season on? nine yeah season nine so okay. what, what was the name of the couple oh man i can't remember i, Tamara I just and call Brent? them old old person one and old person two even though they're younger than me <laughs> just older oh, than everybody else <laughs> i don't know what their names are Anyway, so they get married and it's like kind of awkward because, again, she doesn't have any experience. He's like he's got more experience and stuff, but also he's like a bit of a he fancies himself as like a bit of a ladies man, you know, like right. feels like he's pretty good at picking up women like, you know, in social situations, blah, 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 whatever. So they okay. get married. It's all very like nice. It was like, oh, you look nice. Oh, yeah, you do too. Nice to meet you, whatever. They do their vows <laughs> and stuff. It's all part of the show. <laughs> yeah. And then after yeah, that, yeah, yeah. they do like a photo shoot, right? Like like you would like in a normal wedding, right? But it's, you know, they, they don't know each other, whatever. So they're doing the photo shoot. And this guy is like, he, you know, he's, he, he admits it. Like when they're doing the talking head parts of it, he's like, you know, I'm really just like a, like I'm, I'm a really touchy sort of feely guy. You know, I like to, to touch a lot and stuff like that. And she's just like, I don't like to be touched. Like I'm not a touchy person, whatever. <laughs> so whatever. They, they clash like almost straight away. So they're doing the photo right. shoot and he's got like his hand on her hips and stuff. And at one point he's like, uh, they're, they're like, okay, do you guys want to like face each other? Maybe like kiss or something? You know, we'll take a picture. And she's like, no, I, I don't really want to kiss or whatever. And he's like holding her by the hips close. And he's like, come a bit closer my dear like whispers it and you're just like oh fuck this is this is awful like this is so oh. fucking creepy like who says that sort of thing and you could see in her face she's like what the fuck so she like gets a bit closer and they're taking pictures and stuff and he's like oh by the way sorry about my breath uh i had some chicken twisties before i i came here <laughs> <laughs> What is this show? It sounds a lot of strange things to say. That's the fucking line. A couple of twisties That's on the, the way. fucking Sorry, line. Man, man. It doesn't matter. Like you've just met this person. It doesn't matter oh, how I'm nervous about you my are. Breath. You don't say that you had some chicken twisties before you turned up to a wedding with somebody you never I met before. I don't think the chicken twisties makes your breath that bad. And right does it? after like, you I mean, said, it's not like he had a fucking tuna pate sandwich. Come closer, my dear. It's like it's like that That's fucking creepy. meme, you know, the one like the the mm, pungent, the the smelling one. Do you, you ever see that really long right, ass one? Yeah, yeah. He's it's like him. He's he's that he's that meme. The, like, he sounds mm. like a, that's the kind of thing a spider yeah, would smells say. And, Come closer, uh, my Yes, I know. Like it's so fucking weird, man. It's, but like, that's just one example of uh, like a million examples every day of the stuff that happens on this show. Like, it is it is really hard to watch, but well, it's hilarious at the same we, time, we would, man. This is in it. This is interesting. This whole this whole episode feels like we planned it, but we didn't. Right? There is no fucking guide to how to pull. No, there isn't. Like, it's really difficult. You either get lucky, yeah. or you're just fucking hopeless at it, and you'll never really know why. No. Because people will just go, ugh, yeah, gross, yeah. get away from me. And you think, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. No one's going to tell you. And even if they did, you would think, well, that doesn't sound right. Like, nobody knows. You either find someone and they like you somehow, by some magic, yeah. they like you and you like them, or you end up 40 living with your sister and you never find anybody that's it i do i feel I like i don't think there's a do, solution anyone that tells you there's a plan or a simple all you got to do is these steps is lying okay but as nobody knows if you if you got with somebody okay on this show imagine you're on married at first sight for whatever reason okay in an okay. alternate universe or whatever if if something goes wrong with me and mrs f you sure, rock up onto this show you got your tux on and everything you're waiting at the altar uh, this woman comes in, you turn around, she looks great, and you're like, okay, cool, hi, yeah, my name is Ted, nice to meet you, we're gonna get married and stuff, and, like, immediately, she's a bit, like, uh, like, like, you know, not receptive to you, or you, you could, you, you pick up on, like, a little bit of coldness, maybe? I'm very used to this response Or women, something, so. right? <laughs> but, like, if you picked up on that... You would act accordingly, right? Like, like for yeah, me, I'd storm out. I would either just leave. Yeah, I would just leave. I'd just be like, okay, well, cool. This isn't gonna work. Like, peace. I'm out. Or you would just back off completely, right? And just say, yeah, fine, yeah. whatever. Just be civil. You know, you just. Well, I'll just be civil to this person. Maybe we'll we'll have a fun time just as friends in this like uh, in this experience or whatever. And then after the first week or whatever, peace out. We'll go home. But, you know, maybe we can turn right. around and say, you know, like, we've whatever, fuck, we got through the first week together and it was kind of fun and like, and then let's go. 
I don't know like how people <laughs> just don't approach a situation like that. Like I, I know it's on TV and like a lot probably a lot of it's scripted or whatever, but like these some of these people are just so um I don't know, like clueless. Clueless, like really yeah. thin skinned, like uh Well, uh, that's who they look for when they make these I guess shows. So. But yeah. But that does also mean that these people exist. Of course. They I mean, I've met, I've, I've met lots of people like this, but I just it always surprises me that they do exist. I don't know how you can't just somehow, like, uh, I'm not blaming people, like, uh, you know, for having, like, uh, you know, like, problems socially or whatever, but, like, uh, some of it, honestly, is not that difficult. But, like, uh, like you can really make it much more difficult for yourself, I feel like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and if think, you're ever looking so, yeah. for examples of this... Watch Married at First Sight Australia. <laughs> There's a whole roster of people who just are, are completely socially incompatible. Like it's, it's There's several football teams it, worth of people. Yeah, it astounds me that they, they just operate in real life somehow. Like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they're out there, dude. They're walking around. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. But uh, but there you go. Uh, I think it's like I, that's why I keep watching. I just can't. I can't fathom what's going to happen next, and I'm always pleasantly surprised. By yep. the just the, the, the really the sheer the, the the sheer depth of the stupidity. Yeah, it's crazy. I think it's pure. It's though. pure. Like, yeah. it's, it is it's pure people, I suppose. Oh. And and but it's a whole like you mentioned a whole cavalcade of different factors going on. They <laughs> know they're word. on telly. They're playing up for the camera. Uh, yes. They get picked. Yeah. Some of them they get picked for being yeah. stupid. But but also like it, it all feeds into itself. Like I think that you could pick any chump off the street and they behave bizarrely as we've seen on all reality tv shows there is no shortage of people riddle me this for one these then. shows okay there's a guy riddle him there. there's a guy on the current season his name is mitch and he's with this uh this woman called um ella okay and they're like mitch looks like he should be like in uh in in a boy band like boy zone or something right he's even got like the sure. damon albarn 90s haircut and everything like that dude just spends all of his time on on the beach, you know, like either working out, tanning, whatever. Like every minute, uh, like of his life, must just be spent on the beach. And he looks like right. he looks all right, sort of thing, whatever. So his big big gripe recently has been the show itself. Okay, so like they'll get a task, and like the task is like have a makeout session for five minutes because it'll help you guys like connect more, or whatever. And he's like. I'm not doing that in front of all these people, in front of all these cameras. Like, why did you You're fucking, on television? Why did you sign up for the fucking show? Like, you knew this was gonna happen. Like, and clearly he's watched previous seasons because like he knows when the tasks come in, what they are, like ahead of time. He's like, right. oh, this must be the uh, you know, the the bonding task or whatever. It's like you fucking signed up for this, and now you're complaining about the format of the show while you're on the show. Yeah, <laughs> like it's that is bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. Just fucking, just fucking snog her, mate. Just grab her ass, mate. He comes across <laughs> as like that guy who's figured out the conspiracy, though. You know, like he's oh. above it. You know, he's oh, like he's wise to yeah, it. yeah. Like he's like he's figured out he's on the Truman Show and uh, and oh, not, and something's not right, sort of thing. And you're just like, yeah, I love those people who, <laughs> it's, who it's think bizarre. they're just brilliant yeah. and the They've genius yeah, and, yeah. and they're actually yeah it's just it's like yeah okay man I'm t i think uh, i'm too deep i'm too invested i'm like actually too, too fully complaining about these people now but man it, if it's not i was very impressed by your um guessing of stats earlier pflex oh, by thank the way you. and i thought well, since we're talking about the average person i thought we could uh, i found this this sort of poll this week which was like what americans thought about America, basically, right, right, and how what what percentage of them? Um, okay, so so okay. for example, what percentage of Americans have a household income over five hundred thousand okay. um, dollars? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say like thirty uh, percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna say five percent. Okay, it's less than one percent. Oh right, right gosh. <laughs> okay, because and this is a big problem isn't it oh like, like the, income not house value like actual household just income yeah. i just thought i just thought that like the, i just thought the upper middle class was like really big in america or maybe it used to be i don't no, know no, but i guess no. not anymore it's i guess like over five hundred thousand is not uh 
upper middle class. It's, even it's a that's, lot. That's a lot of money. Um, yeah. What about having a household income of over a hundred thousand? Oh, I'd say like thir- like thirty percent over. I'm going to say ten percent. Yeah. Well, actually, no. It's thirty. It is thirty eight percent of okay. American households have an income. I over think that's 000. the more the, the middle class. I was. I guess there's of. two people working as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, what percentage of Americans own a car? Oh, oh my like god! I'd say ninety percent. Yeah, I'd say tons, like super high percentage. It is ninety yeah. percent. You guys right. are nailing this. Very, very good. However, when the Americans were polled, they only sixty six percent. They only thought sixty six percent of Americans owned a car. I think it's really I, it's 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 easy enough to own a car because um, you can get uh, you can get like you can lease them and stuff as well, right? You don't have to. I think a lot That's of people true. still see a car as like. You bought a car? That's like 30 grand, but nobody's paying 30 grand for a car. Like Somebody no, does. I don't know like who. Maybe like a few people will, pro- yeah. will buy a car straight up, but for for your average person, you're leasing a car, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. It's, yeah. I just get mine secondhand. Never pay for a brand new car. Yeah, me neither. But I think I've that counts as own a car, actually, in yeah, terms yeah, okay. of this. Yeah, yeah. A secondhand anyway. car for sure counts as owning a car. What about having a passport? What percentage of Americans well, I think have a passport? It's less than I think 90. It's I'd say it's like... like Fifty percent or something. I, I was gonna say sixty percent, but it could be it could be less. It could be like forty percent. I feel like Americans in general, like uh, there's a large part of a... America that just never leaves America. Thirty-seven percent. Yeah, I, w- I said forty yeah. percent. I think thirty-seven. Yeah. Most Americans don't even need a passport. So why? Why would they? Um, you can go well, anywhere. Yeah. You can I think you can. America. I think Americans and Canadians likewise can travel like across the border sometimes without them. I think you can go to Canada without one. Yeah, I, I think always so. did. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can go to Mexico and then come back. You don't need to have a passport. Yeah. You just have to say, yes, I'm an American. And they say, okay. I know like in France like and in, in parts of the EU, you don't necessarily need a passport either because you can get like an identity card, which is right. like a passport light. If you're flying, sort of you'll need one. Yeah, if you're flying, flying you, need, you do need one for sure. If you're flying sure. in America, I think you don't need a passport for, but, for just regular travel. I mean, right? even you can like just, in the EU, lots of the borders are, are open for uh, travel in between. Like you don't even need to really get checked. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So like once you you're there, drive from France to Germany without yeah, showing easy, anything. Yeah, yeah, Super yeah. Easy, yeah. What percentage of Americans have read a book in the past year? Oh, uh, like twenty percent. I was going to say fifteen <laughs> percent, but yes, <laughs> it's actually seventy-seven no, percent. Oh right. wow. Well, um, I guess you got to define book. Does yeah. the TV guide count? Does, Does the, the articles Bible in count? Playboy magazine count? <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. Um, what about are married? Percentage of Americans. Oh, it's got to be lower now, right? Because mm. I, I think I'm going to say 33. percent I'm going to say like uh, I'm going to say 32. Oh, percent no, it's, it's actually 50. Oh, wow, I win. I'm surprised <laughs> actually. Like, I, I feel like in the West, uh, like generally things, a lot of things have just become so throwaway, right? Marriage, well, that is. I mean, 50 percent like of, of adults being married is that is pretty fucking low historically speaking. It is, yeah, yeah historically for sure. That is a lot, man. That's nuts. Eh? Also, um. What percentage are Catholic? Um, oh, wow. Catholic. I'm going to say 20%. Maybe 25. We've got a lot of Hispanics and a lot 22. of Italians. Yeah. 20, 22. Got that. Oh, Sorry. 22. You just nailed it so well, V-Flex. You said 20 to 25, and it was 22%. Uh, okay. Like, why don't you guys get married or something? Make it 51%. <laughs> you seem so impressed with each other's guessing skills. I mean, come on. All right, Sips. What? Which? How many? Which percentage of American adults are first generation immigrants? Oh God, like uh, tons of them. Like I'd say, a really high percentage, right? Like the whole country is just like. Uh, do I get a guess as well? It was a it was, it a, was a colony for multiple multiple people living in America who weren't born in America. Is what I mean. Like right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right. Okay. First generation, uh, not. Not, not like second their generation father. means you're the kids. Oh, of probably immigrants. lower than I think. I think a lot of people. I, I think that there's still probably a lot of immigration to America, but I think that uh, a lot of people um, will be born to like in in the country to their parents who are also American, right? That's what you mean. Yes. Yeah. So like I don't know, like. Uh, Seventy percent or something. I'm it's gonna say. I'm gonna say fifteen percent. It's fifteen percent. What? <laughs> First generation immigrants, like like people who have immigrated immigrants 
at the moment, like Mexicans coming in, yeah, and yeah, Polish people and Chinese, they're not seventy oh, percent the wrong way around. Now. Sorry, yeah, you meant the other oh, way around. Yeah, yeah so, I meant okay. the other way around. Sorry, uh-huh. sorry. All right, I, I, I should ask. Not. I know. I don't feel like that was worded very well, but it's. I think it was worded badly. fine. Okay. I think it was worded. What fine. percentage of Americans are military vets? Oh, I, it, that'll be higher, right? Uh, it's like uh, I, 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 it's it'll be it'll be higher than we think, right? It's not going to be like one percent or something. I'd say it's like twenty five percent. I'm going to say five percent. It is five percent oh. or six percent. <laughs> you are amazing at this. Yeah, why are you okay. so good at this? <laughs> I don't know how you know yeah. this so well, but but Sips's guesses are very much in line with the regular ch- people's choices. So actually, like according to this general poll, perception sort of the stuff. S- the general perception is that f- that forty, so forty percent, forty percent, they think over a hundred and like one hundred and fifty million people have served in the exactly. military. So are you out of your fucking minds, America? I know it's bizarre. Um, what percentage of of Americans are? Black. Um, I think it's. I think it's. It's around twenty percent, but I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I'm thinking it's twenty percent. It could be wrong. It's but. well, generally Americans think it's close to forty, right? But actually, it's only twelve percent. Oh, okay. yeah, uh, roughly. And there's actually more Hispanic. Um, right, right. Uh, people living in America now. Seventeen percent are Hispanic. And only and six percent Asian, one percent Native American, two percent Jewish, one percent Muslim. Wow. Okay. Some interesting stats. Sounds very like low, they're taking over to me. Very low, especially the Native American one, because you know if you were said how what percentage of people are Native American, you think oh, I would have thought less than one percent. Yeah. In a yeah no, it's not, it is. It is. It's not it's a between, huge population. Yeah, it's, of it is. It is less than one, but. But yeah, there you go. Um, some interesting stats. You're a, you're an interesting one, P Flax. We'll finish off with one. Okay. What percentage of people in America own a gun? Um, I'm gonna say like um, like twenty percent. I'm gonna say fifty percent. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Sips was closer. It's thirty-two percent, which is still a huge number. That's a huge number. There's yeah. more guns but, than people, so I figured a lot of people would own one. Well, yeah. apparently, like uh, apparently, it's 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 tougher to 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 own and be licensed for an actual gun legally, um, but it's just very easy to to buy ammunition and stuff. That kind of stuff you can just get kind of anywhere, right? Like at Walmart or whatever. But uh, but, the, but the gun itself and the, the permit for the gun and everything it is actually like they they do actually have like a lot of um, uh, you know legislation around <clears throat> gun ownership and stuff like that. I know like the popular um, perception is that that's not the case and it's just like everybody's running around with a gun and stuff. But like I, I don't I, think it's I it's wonder. that easy. And I think a lot of the guns that are uh, that are used in in crime and stuff like that are obviously illegally obtained. Right, like they're stolen. So are you well, saying stolen from the NRA houses line, and stuff? If you, and if you criminalize guns, guns, only criminals will have guns. Well, I mean, they are already like fairly criminalized, though. That's like, like if you like, if you think about it, like if you don't have a permit for a gun, which you know, a lot of people, you know, like it's even in movies and TV shows, you know, like do you have a permit for that gun? You know, like it's a, it's a fairly popular uh, or like common common thing, right? And then. You know, people third. are like, yeah, I went a to jail because I didn't have a permit for the yeah. gun. I don't think you need a permit to own a gun. Yeah, you do. I'm you pretty sure you to, do. Need you to. need to apply for like, depends where you background are, right? checks and then you can buy the gun. You need a permit sure for things like concealed very carry. Wildly if you're going to conceal carry a gun, it is, it is very state by state. But I, I mean, in some states, I don't think it's really even possible to own a gun. In, uh, like, for all. example, in Canada, you have, um, you have to, like, you know, hunting is very big. It's a very big country. Country. And there's a lot of gun ownership in Canada, but like uh, having a permit to to own a gun in the first place takes a while. And then when you do own a gun, um, there's certain things that you have to do with it as well. Like you you have to have a gun cabinet that's like uh, secure. You have to like lock up your guns. You got to like chain them up. I think and, it's probably the same if you want to own a hunting rifle in the UK. It, well, and it's the same in America too. They they have all that stuff as well. But there's just I, I think it's 
I think the availability of guns and and I think the fact that I think one of the big problems and don't quote me on this because I don't actually know a lot about it like the, the just like bits and pieces that's that I picked up along the way that's the general disclaimer for this entire podcast absolutely relax that's like the tagline but I think that the, the big trifles. difference is don't quote us because we don't no, actually know anything about but this but I think the, the big difference is in Canada you can buy guns but none of them are like military grade right like you can get hunting rifles right. and stuff like that but you can't get like a you can't go to the to a place and buy it like a machine gun. M16. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you can you can have guns in New York. I just don't know anyone in New York that owns a gun. <laughs> you probably do. No, That's I the don't. Weird thing. I really don't. If one in three people own a gun, all these people you know probably own a gun. You Not, just don't talk I, about I it. I don't know many people that own guns. No. I know a few, but I mean, I, I think a lot of it. The more rural you get in America, yeah. the, the the number of guns. And I mean, if you goes if up. you if you do anything around livestock or whatever, you have to have some guns. Like you have also, to have. People go gun. hunting a lot in America. Yeah, yeah, that it's a, a big, it's a huge, thing. it's a huge thing in Canada as well. That's Fishing, what those guys hunting. in Florida said to me. Y'all ain't got no guns in England, huh? I was like, no. He goes, what, how do you go hunt? Well, they, I, I mean, said, but I, people I don't. do hunt in England as well, like <laughs> yeah, hunt. with with a with a horse. We don't. We use a horse, dear boy, not a gun. <laughs> and, and dogs. We use dogs. He was like, you mm. all ain't got no guns at all. I was like, no. He goes, but you can't go hunting. I said, no, sir. He goes, well, geez, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't go hunting. <laughs> well, 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 where would we go hunting? Like, there's nowhere right. to do it. Yeah. There's no wild animals that you get a but fucking squirrel. We can't. You could kill a squirrel. Even if you killed a squirrel, there'd probably be some lady like walk, like pushing up a baby in a pram <laughs> next to the tree where you shot the squirrel. It takes an air rifle shot to the neck. Ah! That's yeah. the squirrel. I don't, think, I don't think there's anywhere I could. Po- I mean, is there any like you, you can, hunting so grounds? You, if if you UK? wanted, you could become one of the um, people responsible for the deer cull at Richmond Park. Yeah, I think the Windsors have year. like vast that doesn't estates seem, where that they doesn't seem right. It's very necessary. And stuff. It's very. It, if you don't do it, all the deer fucking die. There's no predators for them in Richmond Park other than cars, and they all have to go five miles an hour. So the only real predator is men with guns who trim the population. Otherwise, all they did suffer in the park. Does. Why don't we just lift the speed limit? Just generally, just because then them... you're putting people at risk as well as deer. Nah. This way, you just kill the deer. There's always going to be those married at first sight people driving into the deers to cull the numbers. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like <laughs> no. um, it's just first date, let's just mash let's together the idiots. Yeah. You know Come mean? closer, my dear. <laughs> Come closer, <laughs> to my, my dear. <laughs> 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 Oh, no. That's it for this week. I need a poop. That's a good one. Thank you, everyone. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Bye.